Okay, my loves. I know there are a lot of you that are out there that are really wondering how do I even set boundaries anymore. Maybe you didn't grow up with great boundaries. Maybe boundaries weren't really modeled well for you. Or maybe you were told that you cannot have boundaries. Maybe you're tired of being gaslighted in your relationships. And you're tired of feeling crazy all the time and guilty for trying to make a difference in your life. If this is you, then I want you to come schedule a call with me. Let's chat about the Unashamed Image Program. The Unashamed Image Program is geared towards you specifically. I am going to be helping you in our next upcoming session of the Unashamed Image. I am personally going to train you how to not feel crazy when someone is gaslighting you, how to be able to stand your ground, to keep your boundaries intact, and to also see through the bull crap. I am also going to be teaching you how to set really confident boundaries, boundaries that you can really rely on. And I'm going to help you communicate them in a way that really makes sense. Basically, I'm going to help you live a life free of shame, and on your terms. If you are ready and you are done feeling all the shame and guilt for trying to set boundaries, if you are not willing to live another moment the way you are right now and in somebody else's shadow, then this is the time to schedule that call with me It's completely free, no pressure, just love, just support. Go to www.erinandersonthetraumacoach.com. Scroll down the page to where it says, let's chat about working together. Click on that button and it'll take you to my booking page. If you're ready to live the unashamed life, schedule that call. Let's get you in the Unashamed Image program, my loves. From my heart to your heart. Bye. Welcome back, everyone. I'm super excited to have you rejoin me again for episode three. So just a little quick recap. If you guys haven't listened to the first two episodes, episode one, I talk a little bit about my story and my experience with um, betrayal trauma. And um, in episode two, I talk about one of the very first things that I saw uh, in a dream that helped me kind of start to gauge where my relationships were at. And it's actually still something that I use um, quite often, actually, if I'm ever struggling with a relationship to maybe see where I need to improve my thoughts or um, where maybe I have trust issues. Um Anything like that. Because if you remember, like one of the biggest things that we can do for ourselves is to um, honestly to, to just check in with ourselves. You know, you can always trust God. And if you can trust God, you can learn to trust yourself. Okay, and I know that's actually one of the things a lot of people with betrayal trauma struggle with, especially, and that's one of the reasons why betrayal trauma is so hard is because um, it's taught you not to trust anyone, including yourself. So this is why I always say, you know, let's start with trusting God. Um, And that actually is a really good introduction into what we're talking about today, and that is truth and lies. And if you know, well, not if, you guys know, if you're listening to this podcast, you totally know. But one of the things that people who struggle with trauma or betrayal trauma especially struggle with the most is um, this idea of what is true. I mean, I've been lied to so many times. I don't know how to make heads nor tails of what's reality and what is not anymore. And um, what if reality is scary? What if reality is bad? What if my reality isn't everything I hoped it would be? So that's kind of what we what we deal with, right? 
And I'm hoping that this episode is going to be super powerful for you if that is something that you struggle with because um, this is something I talk a lot about, honestly. And uh, this is also possibly one of the most powerful things I learned as I was healing from my own trauma. And just a refresher, just, you know, just in case you guys are just coming to this podcast for the first time, I am Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ and God, the Eternal Father. And as such, I also believe in an adversary. And some people call him Satan. I don't even dare, I not dare, but I don't even care to give him a name because I don't want to give him that much attention. Um, but uh, he, there's an adversary. Some people call it the divine and the ego. Okay, I mean, whatever you call it, it's still very similar. Good, evil, divine, ego, God, Satan, all that kind of stuff, okay? For me, he's the adversary. He's just the jerk that tries to screw up my life because he really wants to. Anyway, so there's that. So why am I talking about this? Well, to be able to explain truth and lies, we have to kind of go back to some of the things that you might be hearing in your mind. Some of the voices that are in your head and some of the things you might be listening to. Um, I understand trauma brain very well. I understand the victim mentality very well. You know, I was there... Gall, most of my life, honestly. Uh, and it really, again, hasn't been too terribly long, maybe the last seven to ten years, that I've really started to make a shift and make a change. Um, and so, because of that, I can very well remember some of the things that I used to think. You know, if you guys have listened to my story, episode one, I mean, you know now, you know, my husband dealt with a pornography addiction. I had um, trauma from my mom, uh, trauma from lots of relationships, almost every single relationship I had. And the, the weird thing about that was I was trained to expect trauma in my relationships at this point, you know. I was always looking for it. I was always looking for the next um, betrayal. I was always looking for the next um, painful moment, uh, the next fake individual. And I was so sick of it, but I, I had just come to expect it. That's what I had learned relationships were. And so anytime... I had somebody close to me. I never really got super close to them because I always just expected pain. But the crazy thing is, is I also had this very self-same mentality, not just with other people, but with myself and with God. Now, if you would have asked me back then, you know, do you trust yourself? I would have told you yes. Hindsight, I can very clearly see now, no. I did not. I did not trust myself at all. Because I didn't know what to trust. I didn't know who I could trust. I didn't know what trust was. And that's part of the reason I felt so unsafe. That's part of the reason I felt so unsure of what life was. It's because I didn't know where I could turn. And truth be told, I mean, people would tell me, you can turn to God. And I'd heard, I had heard that so many times. But in my experience, God had let me down. I mean, he sent me to a family that did not understand me. Uh, sent me to a mom that I felt didn't want me didn't love me, didn't care about me, sent me to a husband who overlooked me as well. And I blamed him. I blamed God fully for every painful moment in my life 
And, uh, you know, the way I described it was it was almost just kind of like I was my my leg was caught in a stirrup of a runaway horse. I was hitting every tree, rock, bump, branch, everything. I was broken, bruised, bloodied, and I was headed for, that horse was headed for a cliff and there was nothing I could do do about it. And that's exactly the way it felt. Now, if you guys are listening in and dealing with betrayal trauma, you probably can understand some of that feeling at this point. And it's so, it, you know, that's it's so true. That's that's exactly what betrayal trauma feels like, because it's like you feel fear, uncertainty. You're certain you're going over the cliff, though, and you have no idea how to turn that horse. You have no idea how to save yourself from the pain you know is coming. And you're not sure you're going to survive. So, this is why the relational tears are really important. And why I explained the rocks last week is because you need to know where your rocks are at. And after I saw where my rocks were at, it was like, and that they were painfully clear. They they were in my trust issues with God, and because I had trust issues with God, I had trust issues with myself. Because I had trust issues with myself, I had trust issues with others. Because I had trust issues with others, I had trust issues with my bank account and abundance. And because I had trust issues there, I had no gratitude. How could I be great, grateful for every all the pain in my life that's all life was I, I would wake up and there would be pain I would go to sleep and there would be pain 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 and the only thing I knew to do was to try to control everything and everyone around me to maybe give myself a reprieve and that just made it even more painful and more stressful so when I asked, when I finally yelled at God, and that's also in episode one, and just yelled and yelled and yelled, blaming him, getting angry that he would put me in such a position, and I decided to give him a try. What did I have to lose? I already felt like I lost everything. And the one thing that kind of that my soul did whisper is if there was one place I could try to trust, I was probably the most safe with trying to trust God. And so I gave my will over to him. And one of the things he also taught me was this idea between truth and lies. See, people had showed up for me in my life in a way that was really painful and the beliefs I had adopted from the way people were showing up for me were I'm not lovable I don't matter I'm unseen I don't deserve to live. Love is just a Santa Claus philosophy. It doesn't exist. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. Something must be wrong with me. And the list goes on. I'm not capable. That was another big one. I'm not capable. The list just kept going on and on and on. And I had no idea I was doing this to myself until one day I had made a mistake somewhere and I just mentally and emotionally beat myself up. What is your problem, you stupid fool? Why in the heck can't you possibly get this right? You've done this a million times, Aaron. Come on. What is your problem? 
Are you seriously that stupid? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Yeah, you're so stupid, Aaron, that you can't even get things right. And this is the way I was sitting here just like mentally and emotionally abusing myself. Like, oh my gosh. And all of a sudden, like, af- like I had just kind of like a break and I started to cry. And I heard very clearly... You're angry at other people for treating you this way, yet you treat yourself this way? Why don't you give yourself a little bit of grace, love? And stop expecting perfection. And he, the voice told me, take a minute. Write everything down that you just said. Write it all out. Write it down. Write down word for word what you're hearing. And so I did. I got a f- like three or four pages worth of I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm stupid. I'm not capable. I'm a piece of... And I'll let you fill in the rest of that. This is a show that does not swear. Or at least I shouldn't because I kind of did on episode one. Anyway, but I'll let you fill in the blank there. And I just, like three or four pages worth of just horrible, horrible, horrible thoughts. And then the next thing the voice says, okay, now I want you to turn around and write the opposite on the other side of the page. Write down the opposite of those things you've heard. So, it that was harder. I will say that was a lot harder. I had to step back and I had to um, really think. You know, uh, sometimes, sometimes I had to put it down and I had to come back to it. I was more used to hearing all of my failures and all of the ways that I needed to berate myself than I was all the ways that I was fantastic. And you know, no wonder, no wonder I was hearing those same things from other people. And I'm not saying that, you know, there that other people can't treat you better. Oh, not at all. But what I am saying is you have no business surrounding yourself with people that are going to prove you right if you're being extremely cruel to yourself as well. The f- first thing that you've got to do is start to treat yourself and give yourself the kind of relationship that you are wanting from other people. That means you have to be so much kinder to yourself and give yourself some grace and some patience. So, I had on there, I am not worthy, I am unlovable, um, I am not seen, And, you know, the list goes on. I mean, if you, if you heard earlier, a couple minutes earlier, you could hear some of the other things that I said. And so I started writing the opposite. I'm not worthy. I am worthy. And the voice stopped me. And he says, okay, stop for a second. And what else? I am worthy and what? I am worthy and beautiful? Okay, great. Put that down. Write that down. I said, okay. I am not seen. On the opposite side, I said, not only am I seen, but I am noticed by those that matter the most. Oh, that was a great one. Okay, let's keep let's keep going. I'm not worthy. Okay. 
I am worthy and deserving. I'm not lovable. The creator of the universe loves me. Created me. Sees me. And wants me to know him because he loves me. As I continued making this list, I will say that those things on the truth side didn't feel true. I had been so unkind to myself for so long that the lies actually felt more true than um, the truth did. But comparing each side to what I knew about God and as I claimed him to be my heavenly father it made no sense that a loving heavenly father the creator of the universe and the one that created me because he wanted to would ever say those things to me he'd never say I'm not worthy or I'm not deserving, or I'm not good enough, I'm not seen. It made no sense. So I had to sit back for just a second and think to myself, okay, interesting. For so long, it hasn't been God that I've been listening to. There's no way it possibly could be. It's been the adversary because God knows more about me than I even know. He's known me from the very beginnings of creation. I don't remember that. So, therefore... All these thoughts that I have about myself can't possibly be true. It, it, there's no way. It's, it, it makes reason stare. So how do you feel about boundaries? It's a legitimate question. A lot of people come to me really struggling with this concept. They often feel guilty for setting boundaries or they're not sure about even what a boundary is. You know, they've heard the term, set the boundary, things like that, but that's really confusing for them because it's not something that's well taught in our society nowadays, right? They know that boundaries are really important to having healthy, constructive, supportive, and wonderful relationships, but why? And oftentimes, they also know that they feel like their boundaries are being violated, but they can't quite pinpoint what the boundary is that's being violated. That's why I've created the Clarifying and Creating Your Boundaries free PDF. You can find out what your boundaries are, how to tune in to what the boundary needs to be, and how to effectively create and communicate your boundary so that way you stay in this place that respects you respects the other person but also gives you the confidence in your boundaries so that way you stop being gaslighted disrespected and unseen having your boundaries really clear gives you a voice and also helps the other person stay in accountability with themselves so that's not a role that you have to take on anymore So if you are ready to really have clear boundaries, to really understand what your role is in the boundary, and to give yourself some safety and some protection against people that might try to gaslight you or are just being disrespectful, go grab my Creating and Clarifying Your Boundary PDF at ErinAndersonTheTraumaCoach.com. And while you're there, let's schedule a call with me. Come have a chat with me so that way I can really, really help you master this particular skill, creating boundaries, clarifying the boundary, communicating that boundary, 
and so that way I can also help you have relationships that show up to support you, cherish you, and love you. Because if, if God truly did love me, like I believed he did, and I believe I am his child, then he's either abusive and created the world just so he could drop it on my head, or he created the world and put me in it so I could find beauty connect that beauty to myself and then realize how I am like him. God doesn't tell these things to himself either. He wants me to see how I am like him. Similar to the way, and like I said, guys, I mean, my mom wasn't perfect, don't get me wrong, but I actually really do appreciate the example she set for me. Without her example, I wouldn't have had the need to turn to God. I'm glad I turned to him because I needed perfection in that moment, and I had to go to the source of perfection. That, unfortunately, will not ever be on this earth. This is not a perfect planet. He created an imperfect planet for imperfect people so that way we could learn about imperfection so that way we could turn around and, crazily enough, learn the truth about what perfection is and see ourselves in it. How comfortable would you be in the most grand, beautiful palace in the world not knowing how to take care of it. No. We have to be in a state where we understand. And that state has to surround us. Which is possibly part of the reason why I was so stuck in the lies is because that's what I had surrounded myself with. Unconsciously, but still surrounded myself with that. And that, if that was going to change, I had to see how I was like my perfect parent. What characteristics I possessed and that he possessed as well. I am like my mom in a lot of ways, guys. My mom is a fantastic cook. She taught me well. My mom is very creative. She taught me well. My mom is a wonderful author. She taught me well. My mom is a clean freak. She taught me well. She also didn't have six kids, so if you ever come to my house, don't expect my house to be clean. But she taught me well. And in a lot of ways, I'm like her. In a lot of ways, I'm like my fabulous father. But I started to draw and fill in the gaps of how I was like God, my perfect father. And that helped me understand how I was worthy and deserving of love. His love. And that is what truly, truly mattered is how I began to see myself the way he sees me. So that caused me to spend some time working on my gifts and my talents because God is so gifted and so talented. That caused me to spend some time thinking about characteristics char- like character descriptions that I really wanted like patience loving honest uh, truthful and I really started considering like who God was 
and what what he was as a character to me. And I made a list of all these things, and then I started doing an in-depth scripture study of those characteristics, starting with um, forgiving, because I misunderstood forgiveness extremely misunderstood forgiveness I believed it was just another way to betray me and but I knew God was forgiving and so if I really wanted to heal from betrayal trauma I had to understand forgiveness and what forgiveness was and boy did that open up some doors for me when I started looking at who God was, writing down his characteristics, some of his talents, spending time in those talents, and actually having conversations with God while I was doing those talents. I still do this to this day. I have learned very well how to draw, play the piano, uh, sing, and I've improved my talents very much so under his tutelage. Um, by asking him things like, what do you think? Like, just having a conversation. Like, I'm having a conversation with you. And he does speak. He does, he did. He replied and gave me um, ways that I could improve what I was doing. So, As I also decided to research what forgiveness was in the scriptures, it also gave me some things to try and practice. Now, we're almost out of time, so maybe forgiveness might be a really, really good topic for next week. And trust me, guys, it is a topic from what I've learned that will blow your mind because it totally blew mine. But the last thing I realized, and this was a piece that kind of cut me to the core, but cut enough that I also cut ties. My mindset was so focused on the lies and the hurt that I was receiving that I couldn't see the joy, I couldn't see the beauty, I couldn't see it. I was too focused on the pain, and I did that. If I'm going to be completely honest with myself, I was so focused on the pain because I wanted somebody else to focus on it. If somebody else could see my pain and realize how much they were hurting me, maybe they would stop. I was putting the responsibility of my peace on someone else. And it got to, like, it it wasn't very long into my healing journey that I was like, nope, 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 nope. I'm not, I'm not leaving that in somebody else's hands. But because I was so focused on it and those lies, I realized that I had forgotten my God. I didn't even know who he was. I could have told you much more clearly who the adversary was than God himself. And it turned out to be a blessing because I actually know God far better than I know the adversary now. I've done the character descriptions And it was fabulous what I learned about him. And how I wanted to be like him, just like him. And I still do this to this day. You know, think about who he is, his character descriptions, and how they tie into me as a person. So that way I can always see within myself. That way I can always see within myself him. And that is how I know he is my God. 
is that I can always see himself in me. But the misery before was a true testament to who I had been making my God in the first place. Not consciously. It was a very unconscious thing. But that is not who I wanted my God to be. He was painful. He was hurtful. He left me hopeless. And in true misery. Making me believe that that is what I deserved. Nobody would love me. And the reason why was so that way I would never know who I am. See, here's the thing. The adversary is not scared of you if you know who you are. I mean, if you don't know who you are. I'm sorry. The ad- let, me re- let me say that again. The adversary is not scared of you if you consistently don't know who you are. If he can get you to believe that life is hopeless, painful, miserable, and that the people around you only want to hurt you, you'll never see yourself. You will never see who you truly are because I guarantee that is not who God created you to be. The adversary remembers who you are. So he will tell you the exact opposite things to get you to believe something different. And if you get to if you believe something different about yourself than what is true, then you will never know your mission, you'll never know your purpose, you will never have direction and you're going to just kind of sit in that hopeless wandering state waiting for somebody else to come and rescue you when the truth of the matter is is you have already been rescued. That's what the atonement was. That's what the atonement was, guys. So, it's time. If you're dealing with betrayal trauma, I'm going to give you a a challenge I challenge you to write down everything you hear write the opposite then write the opposite write down all of the painful things you hear write down the opposite and at the beginning of this beginning of all that painful stuff this is what the adversary wants me to believe On the opposite side, this is what God wants me to know. And trust that side. Do a character description of God. Write down his characteristics. Get to know him. And see how you are like him. Start drawing conclusions. You won't regret it. Because then you start to see yourself as his child. As royalty of heaven. As the true prince or princess that you are. And remember how people don't behave above what they believe about themselves? There is nothing better to change behavior than a true belief. About who you are. If you believe you're royalty of heaven, you act like it. And when you act like it, people don't mess with that. Because that really elicits a fear, not only in the adversary himself, but the demons that other people carry. Nothing says truth and majesty more than connecting yourself to the source of truth and majesty. Nothing says perfection more than connecting yourself to the source of perfection. So if you're really ready to heal, if you're ready to be done, 
I am totally going to invite you this week to focus on truth. Put away the lies. If it hurts, there's a very good chance that it's not true. What does God want you to know? And if you pay attention to those lies, the adversary will, and and then flip those lies, the adversary will actually tell you what's true. He is the father of all lies. God is the father of all truth. They are opposites in every single way. And this is why you cannot serve two masters. This is why you cannot have a foot in both because you will literally be torn apart. It's not possible. So decide which side you're on and give it all your focus, your intent, and your power. Okay. Next week... I want you to tune in. We are talking about what forgiveness is, the things that I learned about forgiveness, and why it's so powerful, how the traditional view of forgiveness is totally wrong, um, and um, how forgiveness is actually letting go of trauma. Okay? So stay tuned for next week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. See you soon. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today and listening in on this podcasting episode. Don't forget to tune in next week. It's going to